In this video, we're going to be looking at a breakdown of this image here, and we're going to create it from the start. I'll put links to where I found all the elements of this in the description, so if you want to follow along. There are, however, a couple of elements that I had to download from Adobe Stock, but Adobe Stock allow you to do a 30-day trial. I have a subscription with them, but they allow you to do a 30-day trial if you want to do that with it. Now, if you're creating a composite, you need to have background, mid-ground and foreground elements to give the entire image depth. What we're going to do is I'm going to take this right back to the very beginning and hopefully you'll follow along with this if you want to try it for yourself. For our starting point, what we're going to do is create a new document at 3736 pixels by 1858 pixels, landscape orientation, 300 pixels per inch and 16 bit. The background colour is a custom colour of RGB set at 100 for all and click OK, then click Create. So that's as we're now in the document and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start bringing in all the different elements of this. So we're going to create the background first, then the mid-ground and then the foreground for this. So if I go into my downloads and the first thing that I want to put in is this here. So I'm dragging them straight on so that it creates a smart object and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch that slightly and just move it over there and just click OK for this because I want to bring in a second element as well. The second element I'm going to bring in is this one here. Now you'll notice there is a colour difference in this, but we will deal with that. So I'm going to move that over and take the move tool and move them up. What I'm looking to do is join these two together, just around about there. So we have the sand coming over here and moving into that one. And we have these elements here. Now, at the moment, they're too big. But what we're going to do is we're going to bring it in slightly, just to around about there. And I am going to rasterize both of these. So just select both, right click, and rasterize layers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend both of these together, just so that they look okay for the background elements. So what we're going to do is we're going to select both layers, and we're going to go Control and T. And we're going to make these fit inside the documents. It doesn't matter what handle you grab these from, as long as they fit inside the document. And that, for me, is OK. I'm going to click OK here. It's in the background, so the contrast is going to be less. So you have an option. You can either make this one more red or lighten this one. For me, it's easier just to take the top layer, create an adjustment layer. From the master, take the reds. And we're just going to push the saturation in that one. Now you'll notice it is affecting both of them. That's because we need to click this here, which means clip to the layer below. And I am now looking just to adjust the tonal value in here to match roughly in here. I'm not looking at any other areas. Go for that, scroll down, perhaps darken it down slightly just to around about there. Now that's working for me. So I'm going to blend both of these together and it's just Control and E and then Control and E again. So we now have one layer made out of those adjustments. I don't want any of the mountains in the background. Those, ones, those three there and those two there. So I can create a mask in this and paint it out. Or there is another way of doing this. If I go into Channels and I turn off the RGB, and I look for the channel with the most contrast. The blue seems to be better for me, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the blue down. And in this copied layer, go into Image Adjustments, and we're going to play with the levels first. So I'm going to darken that down slightly, so you can see it's becoming slightly more contrasty. I can push the whites and darken it down even further. So we're creating a bit more contrast in here. I can lift the blacks just to do that. So we now have a better contrast in this area here. I'm going to click OK. The next thing we can do is we can go into the brush and if we set the brush at overlay, 
I can choose to paint in areas and it will affect areas slightly differently. So if I go in and I, my brush is black at the moment and I paint in in black, this will paint out and provide me with a better contrast. So we are painting in here and it's not going to be perfect by any means at all, but it allows us to select slightly better within this. I'm going to swap the brush to white and I'm going to paint out all this area here and go in here and there, down in there. Right, I'm going to zoom back out. Then I'm going to hold down control on the keyboard and that will make a selection based on what we have just done. If we turn on RGB and turn that off, Get into layers, and if I hit the mask tool, you'll see that we have a copy of the sky. Well, we want to invert that, so we just control and I in the keyboard, and we have a better selection now. Few areas that we need to tidy up, and that is just if you choose black here, and we can get in and get rid of these. So that's one way of creating a selection when the depth in the image isn't too good for the selection. What we can do here, and this is just a quick way, remember this is in the, the distance, so I'm actually not too bothered in what happens next. I am going to get into the lasso tool, and I am just going to draw my own rocks. I'm drawing within inside of the area that I can see just now. And it is mainly just to take out these areas here. So I can do that and just follow that right round up here because you can see we've got areas missed there. And as I'm doing this, I'm doing it with the mouse. So I don't have to be too careful here. When I get to this area, I'll take my time and I'll move up there and then I'll close it by going back round. What I can do now Let's go back into the brush and paint in black and I will take the overlay back to normal and it'll be a lot quicker to do. So there you go, there's one cut out and I'll do the same for the rest. So that's as we now have the distance, but we're still the sky and everything to put in. But what I'm also going to do, you notice that there's a hard line in here. What I'm also going to do is go in here and zoom in slightly to this area. I'm going to take the cone stamp tool and I'm going to take the size down. And now this is a visual exercise, shall we say, where you decide what you want to blend in, like so, and what you want to remove. Now, you probably get better results if you drop the opacity. The flow is okay for this. This is in the distance and it's going to be dropped away and softened anyway, so you won't notice it. But you still want to have the detail in it. And I'll just take that in there and I'm going to take that one back through there slightly. Take some detail here. And just do that. And continue to do that until you're happy with the results that you have. I'm going to go for that because this will be softened. It will be in the background. But at the same time, you have to think about what's going to be visible, what's not going to be visible. So a nice blend in here will work okay with this. I'll zoom that out. We know it's there, but once the final image is done, you won't see it as much. So for that, we are going to check that in green to know that we're finished with this one. The next thing we are going to do is we're going to add in more background, but some of this will make up the foreground and we're just going to give more depth to it. So I'm going to bring in a couple more layers and one of the layers I'm going to bring in and drop it in there is this one here. I'm going to hold down shift, stretch that out to either side and I like the sky colour in this one so I'm going to save that but what we can do now is we can actually select the sky in this 
and we get quite a nice selection there. So I'm going to rasterize this layer and I'm also going to mask it. So we now have the sky, but again, I want the inverse of that, control and I. So we now have this here and I'm going to bring that down slightly. And you'll notice with this that there is parts remaining. So what you've got to do, place it over and you can use the arrows to place that over. So we've got all this going on here. I'm going to stretch it even further just to make sure it's totally out of the scene. And we have that. So now that we have that, you notice there's a person there, but they're going to be hidden later, so we don't have to worry about that. I did say I liked that colour there. So what I'm going to do is hold down shift and click on the mask and that hides the mask. I'm then going to take the flood fill tool, select that background colour, go to the background, create a new layer and fill that in. And then I'm going to release that mask. So you can see now we have the background layer. And also this will show up some mistakes in your masks. So I'm going to get back in here and just very quickly do that. We're just building up the elements of this just now. We're not even adding any tone or anything to this. We're building up the elements. As I say, we're building this up. So I'm just layering in everything. So I'm going to do that. And you can see perhaps just roughly where the framing was standing. So I'm going to click OK, rasterize this, select the sky. This time I'm going to delete the sky, deselect. And we're going to move this down to around there. Right, you'll notice that there is some white showing here that banding there just in between the sky and the sand itself so i'm going to show you how to get rid of that so if i hold down control and click on the layer it makes a selection if i go up to select modify and expand by two pixels you see it goes back the way so what we want to do is we want to come in the way so i'll just step that back so we go select modify and contract and it's two pixels it's coming in with. And you can see it there. So that is taking out that banding. Now, I would normally go back half a pixel, but because this is in the distance, I'm not too bothered. But if I hit the backspace key, it'll actually delete that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to select, inverse. And now it's selecting these areas here. So I can now hit the backspace key. Deselect. And what that does is that softens the edge there. If I had used the 0.5 feather on this, it would have been an even softer edge. But as I say, this is in the distance. So I am genuinely not too bothered at the moment. I'm going to move that down. And I'm going to move that to around about there. We are only placing elements in just now. We're not too bothered about where they are just as yet. And I actually will move that one there. Now we have the background element here and that's going to be too much space taken up. So I'm going to go Control and T and I'm going to squash this down slightly and move it over to about there and then stretch it again. So this area here was sitting outside of the document bounds when we edited. That's why the sky is still in that. I'm going to take that right out to about there. Now, the reason I'm doing that, if I put the crop on here, you'll notice that that is sitting there. And that's roughly where I had the framing in the first image. So what I'm going to do is I am going to put a line on that, just a bit there. And that's all I need. I don't need anything more from that. I'm just going to click No. So I know that I want this area here over there. So let's move it in. Move that to about there. So that means these are going to be too much in the image. So if I take that down, I'd actually get away with it around about there. 
So we need to extend this area here and we need to extend it out while remaining here. One way of doing that, if we don't want to add any more elements into it, is by using the cone stamp tool. Make sure it's set at current layer and select an area on that ridge line. Go over it and paint in. Just like that. And keep going back and selecting it until you extend it. And because it's sand, if it does undulate slightly, you will get away with it because of the way the sand blows. So you are totally fine with this one. So I'm just going to take that in there, paint this down as well. And just in there. So we have that. So you'll notice that on this one we have the lighter area. If I commit the mask by right clicking and apply layer mask and then do the same process again, hold down control, uh, whilst clicking in the layer, go over to select, modify and contract and I'll take it in by two pixels. This time I'm going to make it slightly softer. So then I am going to go back into select, modify and feather. And my feather is set at 0 0.5. So I'm going to click OK, select, inverse, delete. And that delete was the backspace key. Deselect. So you'll notice there's no white showing there at all now. Now the other thing you may notice is the light. And this is what we've got to do. You'll notice that the light is in this area here, but the light is coming from that area. Now it's otherworldly, so it could be anything at all. So what you want to do is you want to check, perhaps flip this round. So if I select the layer, edit, transform, flip horizontal. Now that perhaps has given us a better effect here. And I'm just going to extend that out. That was control and T. And then control and do that. So that says we're building up this world here. And if I place that about there, control and H will let me see roughly where I want the framing to be. Over there, it'll be okay. But I'm going to bring it back just so that it's there. Rule of thirds in that way we're drawing into it. Control and H to hide that. Now we've got this nearly set up. So what we want to do now is we want to create some distance in it as well. So I'm going to bring in one of the moon images that I had. I'm dropping that in there and this is just because it's a high res one. And I'm going to take that down to there, click OK, move it just above the background, put it in there. And then for this one, we're just going to go select subject. And I'm actually going to delete that. So I'm going to right click, rasterize layer and select inverse or what I can do is control and J and it copies it up a layer and then I'm going to delete it. So we now have the moon here and it looks a bit off down round this ridge here. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to blend this back in. So I'm going to drop the opacity of it because we don't want it to be too much in the scene. I'm also going to blur it slightly so I'm going to go in for a Gaussian blur because it's looking through the atmosphere so I'm going to get a bit there click OK then I'm going to create a mask on it and for the mask I am going to go into the gradient tool and the gradient tool is set black to transparent so I'm just going to drag in about there and you can see how we're dealing with some of the edges here. Now, the other thing that we've got to think about is if we're on the worlds, the worlds are round. So that fade there isn't really perfect. So we've got to add to that. So I'm going to get into the brush, make the brush quite big. And I'm going to paint in a small arc just around there. If I think it's too much, X and paint back in about there and then just keep working back and forward until we've got it. So I'm going to leave it at that because these are totally and utterly editable at a later date. I also mentioned about opacity and distance. 
So how we're going to create the distance in here, I'm going to select that layer and I'm going to turn the opacity down in this and pull it right back so that it sends it into the distance. The other thing that I want to do as well, I quite like how sharp it is, but I also want to add a little more softness to it. So I'm going to click it, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, a very subtle Gaussian blur. See about there. That's okay, that looks good with the atmosphere there. We still need to create depth in this and we also want to create a sandstorm in it as well for the worms. So what I'm going to do is create a new layer. I'm going to go in and choose a colour for the sand. And I'm just going to work with what's there. Now to me that's slightly too orange and we're going to be changing that later. But it will also give me depth in the image when it comes to change it. So I'm just going to click one, two, three, and you can see that already. You can see how these brushes work. Control and T, hold down shift, and I'm going to stretch this out. And I'm going to stretch it down and perhaps just to around about there. So you can see that that's created a line across the top. I'm going to erase some of that. So I'm just going to get into E and just erase some of that. I'm not worried too much about this. This is just creating the atmosphere and depth in here. Then I'm going to create a new layer. Click a couple of times, three again, control and T, and stretch this one out. And I'm going to move that one down. Now, we don't want to have too much repetition here, but you can see that that's added to the effect of this. So if we don't want too much repetition, we can go into Edit, Transform, Warp. Now, I can move some of this as well, Let's just be dragging it. I'm not adding any of the splits in this because I'm just trying to create the impression of a sandstorm without seeing repetition. I can bend that up there, bring that down to there. So far, so good. Click OK. Again, you can see that there is a line here. Now, let's check what one that's coming from. So it's still coming from the first one. So what I'm going to do is go back into the eraser and erase some of it. And I'm just clicking on there. So that's the thing with the sand and dust. We can adjust this whenever we want for the image. Okay, we're sitting now with like an overall feel for this image. We have to create the middle elements and then the foreground elements. Now we've created this so far, but so far to me it's still too vibrant, too rich in colour. So above all of these, I am going to create an adjustment layer. And what I'm going to do with the adjustment layer is bring the saturation down. Now that's affecting everything within the image and I'm quite okay about that. Now I can shift the hue in this slightly as well. I could take it over here or minus three and maybe take it to about there because we're adding elements later which will complement what we've already done. And I can darken this down as well or lighten it up like so. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to leave this one at zero just now. So quite happy with that. Let's move on to the next stage. We're not going to add the framing or the sandworms until last. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to group all of these together. And that's clicking all the layers while holding shift and then put them in a group. And I'm going to call these background. So now I'm going to jump to the foreground element. So what I'm going to do is I am going to bring in the rocks for the foreground. And I'll just bring them in here, drop them. I'm dragging everything in. You can file open and bring it in, but I'm dragging everything in. And what I'm going to do is go select subject. And that will select most of what I need for this in this instance. And it's mainly this rock here that I'm after for the entire edit of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to extend that slightly in case I need to play it with anything. So I've chosen the lasso tool holding down shift and working inside my selection and just draw in there. Going to zoom in. You'll notice it's also selected here. So I'm going to remove that. If I hold down alt and start outside my selection, 
I can draw around there. Zoom back out and then go Control and J. So that's me copied that up. I'm going to delete that layer. So we've now cut that out and we want to make two copies of it. So if you just select the layer, Control and J, and I'm going to turn one copy off. This one here, I'm going to edit, transform, flip horizontal, and then I'm going to scale it as well. So that's Control and T, scale it right up, move it right off the screen, and I'm using it as a framing element. If I do round about there, I've got to watch that there's no other elements, but also remember it can be moved again in the, later on. So I'm going to do that in there. Because it's closer to us, it needs to be more contrasting. As you can see, that one's quite light. So what I'm going to do is go into adjustments. I'm going to adjust the contrast of this which is still keeping that warm, rich colour. So what I'm also going to have to do is turn the brightness down and it's affecting the entire image, as you see. Click that arrow there and it only affects this. So as I turn the brightness down and push the contrast, each time you push contrast, it enhances the saturation as well. So if I do that, you can see how much that is being illuminated. So I'm going to go around about there. Quite happy with that and how it looks. Perhaps make it slightly bigger because I don't like the way that that drops off there. So I'm going to move that around until I'm quite happy with where it's sitting and perhaps about there. But I don't like that curve there because that's drawing my eyes to it. So I can move that around to about there. Quite happy so far. And that's as we've done quite a bit already because we've created distance, we've created middle ground and we're now into the foreground. The middle ground object is going to be the framing and the framing is going to be standing there. We're still the sandworms to add. But as I said, this needs to be more contrasty. So above this, I'm going to create another adjustment layer and I am going to go in and take hue saturation and bring the saturation out of this. Now it's affecting the entire image as you see. Click here, bring it down there. It's still too light for me. I'm going to do that. Maybe push the saturation slightly again. Now, because we're building it up this way, I have more elements to add in the very foreground, which is going to create the atmosphere of the entire image. And I'll bring them in next just to show you so that you can see how it's all coming together. Right, so I'm quite happy with that one there. I am then going to get back in to this one. Now I don't want as much of the rocks showing here, so what I can do is I can go Control T, move that up, rotate it, and just do that. And what we're doing, as I said, we're creating a frame within the image so that your eyes are led in. Again, adjustment layer, Brightness and contrast, push the contrast, adjust the brightness slightly, click on there, just to see how we're going to work this one. And above that one, create a hue saturation layer, bring the saturation back a bit. Now I'm trying to match both of these. I could very simply just copy it up, but it's light interacting with everything within the scene. So let's just go about there. Take that back. That's not too bad at that. So we have that so far. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring in all the effects of the atmosphere so that you can see how the image comes together because right now it doesn't look as if anything's happening with it. So again, I'm going to put these in a group. And this group I'm going to call Rocks. Above that, I'm going to bring in this here. Now, this here is going to affect the entire image, and I'm going to stretch this out slightly, Control and T. And this also determines the way the light is coming in as well. From this, rasterize, and also adjustments, and we're going to change the hue saturation in this one. We're going to colorize this one, and we're going to push it quite a bit in here. 
just to about there. And what we're going to do with this layer here is we are going to change the blend mode to screen. So you can see already what that has done to the image. We can go back into the adjustments and the hue saturation and we can play around with this hue and saturation in here. Can take the lightness down just to give it more kind of warming. You can see how it all comes together from that. And I'm also going to drop the opacity of that one. Not so keen in the colour in here. So let's just adjust that. For me, it's too warm. I'm going to bring back the opacity there again. And that I'm going to clip to that one. And push the opacity of this one here back up. So we get that effect, which is more of what I am after for this. Again, I'm going to copy that up, but what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to bring it in there and I'm going to move it up a layer above everything. I'm also going to copy the hue saturation layer up by holding down Alt and that copies it into that and let's just clip it to it. And that's it now clipped to that layer. I held down Alt by doing that. Again, rasterize, Control and T, push it out that way, push it that way, click OK, edit, transform, flip horizontal. So it now moves the light over to that side. But what we still haven't done is we haven't went for a screen blend yet. So you'll notice now that there are light on both sides of this so we need to get rid of one of them so we can move that one up slightly and out the way and it's just creating more drama in here and more atmosphere should I say drag that down drag that out there just a tiny bit we have a line I'm okay with deleting this line like so and at the same time I can go over here and I can get rid of some of the areas in here as well. Now the overall colour that's here, I don't know if I'm too happy with at the moment, but you'll notice that that's because it's released the clipping mask here. So I hold down Alt, and that brings us back to the colour. Everything's looking okay so far. We're now going to jump back and add the sandworms. So again, I'm going to group this. And I'm just going to call this Atmosphere. I'm going to turn it off. And that way I can check everything each time with the Atmosphere. So let's go in and look at the worms. Now, the worms are made of the most basic material. So I'm going to bring in the first worm. And it's a corrugated pipe, as you can see. So I'm just going to do that and leave it there. And you can see this is the preview image from Adobe Stock. That is a good thing that you can do with Adobe Stock. You can go in and download a preview to see if it works with your images and then download the high res after that if you're quite happy with it. So from here, I'm going to go select subject. And that copies the pipe. Control J. And I now have a copy of that pipe, so I'm going to delete that. The pipe colour is wrong, so let's just go in straight away and adjust that pipe colour. And this time I'm going to press Control and U, and that brings up a saturation, hue saturation. If I click on the colour eyes, I can then go in and play around with this. Remember that doing it this way, though, is totally destructive. So I'm actually affecting the colour on this layer. So I'm going to lighten that up slightly. And it'll be committed to this as well. So if I click OK, that's it. So you can see that it's sitting in front of this. We need it to go behind again. So we do that. And as you can see in this one, it does still say Adobe Stop, where it's just to let you know that you can go in and do that. Right, the worm has to work. So for me, I'm actually going to make a copy of this right now and go Control and J. 
and I'm going to turn off the background one for the moment. So I'm going to stretch the worm and control and T and I'm going to stretch it. Take it over that way. Again, what we're doing is we're causing a frame in here. And am I quite happy with that? Yep, quite happy with that so far. Edit, transform, flip, vertical. So we now have this. And the worm's coming up there, so we can go in and rotate that. And we can do that with it. We can do whatever we want with this. But I need the worm to come over that way. Because I want the elements and everything to lead into the framing. I'm going to stretch this slightly. Hold down shift and just stretch it slightly like so. So I'm going to bring that down even more. Just to about there. Still doesn't look like a sandworm, even when we do that. But this one here is going to move on top of it, like so. And come over there. And we're now going to play around with this until we're happy with it. But for now, I'm going to leave that like that. And you'll also notice that because I mentioned the light was there, I've chosen the areas of the light. So if I put that back on, you can see what's going to happen. But that now looks like corrugated pipe in a picture. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to start texturizing it. But before I do that, I want to soften this so that it doesn't look exactly like cor corrugated pipe just now. So I'm going to choose one of them. Let's go for this one first. And we're going to go into filter, blur, Gaussian blur and we will just push that slightly not too much but enough to take out any elements and we also need to put it into the distance as well so I'm going to go with that and then I'm going to just go into the back one here and go filter and it's already chosen for us so we've got the Gaussian blur there as well now it's entirely up to you how you do this you can set the worm up in your own way perhaps I wouldn't go for that one depending on what pipe you're using. I step that back a couple of times. I'd maybe go for something like that. At the same time though, we can move all the elements in here. So you've got the, the choice of this. Still doesn't look like a sandworm. It looks like a corrugated pipe. So let's deal with that. So we need to create some texture on the worm. So let's just bring in this rock texture here and I'm going to increase the size by holding down shift and stretching the size out a bit just to about there I'm unsure how it's going to look but once I've done it I can actually move it anyway so I'm going to click OK and rasterize and then blend now we're going to have to see what one's going to look like this that one might be OK that one's not too much. Vivid light. Perhaps that. Let's go for linear light. Now you'll notice it's still in the entire image. So let's hold down Alt and clip it to the layer below. Now is that too much or... We can drag it back slightly. So we're getting that in there. Right, you'll also notice that we have some straight lines going through this. We can affect these as well. If we're going to edit, transform and warp, I can go into the grids and split these. And from that point there, I can drag that up and I can drag that down, which will create a slight curvature in it. And I can take it right off there around there I'm quite happy with the rest of it that's the only bit that I'm not so happy with we've got that let's take it back around slightly I can go in and create another one I can go in and create another split there grab that and move it up and move it round to match some of the curves on this we'll just go in here drag that over bring that round and what we'll do is we'll do exactly the same with the second one so I'm just going to bring in that
still looks like a pipe though. So what we do is we create these, put them in a group, and then this group we move behind the sandstorm. We can also, from that group, create a copy and turn that off, and that was Control and J. And this copy here, we can go in, right click, convert to smart object. And in this smart object that we've just created, go into filter and Gaussian blur again. So you see there's textures, you see there's pipes, but now we've got something more resembling a sandworm with this. And you can keep adding in the texture to this. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm also going to drop the opacity of this one. I want it to be seen. But I also want you to know that it's in the distance. So it's less contrasty as well. Still doesn't look like much and you know how it's been created so far. But if you remember, each time you go in, if you go up to the top layer here and create atmosphere, it gives you a slightly better feel for how the entire image is coming together. And for me, that looks okay. I would perhaps go in and even blur that further. But you can see now we roughly have a sandworm there. We have four ground elements. We have one of the moons. Everything there is coming together quite slowly, but hopefully step by step so that you can follow along if you want to do it. We still haven't finished yet though. So what I want to do now is create even more depth with the sand. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to get into my brushes. This time I'm going to go into the smoke brushes. Now I've got many different smoke brushes here and because I'm trying to create more depth in it, I'm going, for, going to go for a smaller brush, which is that one there. Now at the moment, it's tiny. So I'm going to increase the brush size to around about that. Uh, the colour, I've darkened slightly. But I'm going to lift it again just to around there. So that's the colour we're going to get from the sand. Perhaps a tiny bit lighter as well. There. So let's check that. Yep, that works for me. Warm it up slightly. To about there. Now, I want this to move all around when I'm working it. So I'm going to get into the brush controls and I'm going to get into shape dynamics and click that. Now the size jitter, if you watch the brush here, size jitter will move that. Diameter will move that. Angle jitter is what we want. And we want one that's quite chaotic with this. And so you noticed how that was from the original setup. So if I, on this new layer, just start to click. Each time I click, the brush changes shape and changes size. So we get that effect. Now that looks okay to a point, but what we need to do is we need to drop the opacity like so. And we need to add a tiny bit of blur to that one. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur again. And it's just a small amount I'm going to add to this. Possibly around about there. I'm then going to create a new layer on top of that again. And I'm going to darken this one down now. So I'm going to go in about there. Take the brush size down. Although I know it will change when I click. Maybe one big one in about there and there and see that just about there. Again, I'm going to drop the opacity to about there. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur and just a slight Gaussian blur to this. around about there. Now there is not too much movement in this so we can create movement and what I'm going to do is create, copy both of those layers by selecting them and then I'm going to blend them together. So they are now blended together. If I turn them off you won't see any difference apart from the depth of everything but it's these two here that I want to create movement in. So if I now go into filter, blur, motion blur there won't be too much in this, but you should see the difference. If I turn that off, I 
and the angle of it more like that. And you can do the same with the sandworm. I'll do that as well just to show you. So if I do about there, so it looks it's creating some movement in it. Possibly about there. Right, I'm going to click OK. There's a small area in here that I want to get rid of and I just need to check what one it's in. So you can see the movement there of the sand. I can also turn that down a bit further. I'm going to click E, take that down and just get rid of that first area there. So hopefully you see some movements being created within this. Select all three of them and I'm going to group these and I'm going to turn the opacity down on them. So we've got that. So you can see that there is some movement there. Again, just to see how it's going to look overall, turn back on the atmosphere. That's then creating the depth within the image. The atmosphere is just there. We've created some movement. As I said, I could copy this layer up, Jai, and I'm going to rasterize the layer so that we have that there. If I then go into filter, motion blur, perhaps you see the motion blur there, but that's what it was set at before. I'm going to go for a different motion blur and I'm going to add it to different areas. So because this is in the distance, I'm going to leave the atmosphere on for this and I'm going to select that bit there. And I'm going to go filter, blur, motion blur. Now, I want that motion blur to be a tiny bit, not too much, just about there. I'm quite happy with the angle because it would begin over on a curve. Let's see if I move it that way. Probably about there. I'm okay with that. I've then got this area here. So I'm going to select that. And I'm dealing with it in different areas. And then I'm going to go filter, blur, motion blur. And it doesn't affect it too much in that one because I need to make sure it looks as if it's coming down the way this time. Now I can do that with it. And it gives more effect to it. And I'm going to click OK. So we've left this one area down here. I'm still going to leave that just now. I'm then going to go in to this area here. And as I say, because this is in the distance, we can play around with this. So that one there, we've got the choice. Is it going that way or that way? So let's just go in and go filter, blur, motion blur. You don't see too much here. Let's send it that way. So you can see the effect that it's actually having. Now, if I do that, you'll notice that it blurs the entire thing. So let's take it just so there's a bit of speed in there. Let's go for that. Now, with this layer, I can add more contrast to it. I'm going to get into the final part of this here. And that's the reason I left the atmosphere on while I was doing this, because I need it to look as believable as possible. I, I'm then going to go in filter, blur, motion blur. And what way do we want this one to go? Just about there, and perhaps not just as much, because I still want the ridges to show. Right. So now it possibly looks a bit better. If I turn this off, you'll see the difference. Slightly more believable as a sandworm now. Now I'm going to add contrast to this. I'm going to go up to adjustments and I'm going to add contrast to that layer. Now it'll add it overall to everything. But I'm only going to clip it to the one layer. So the more contrast I add the more it enhances the movement. So I take that brightness back as well. You'll notice that we can play around with this until you get to a point where you're quite happy with it. Quite happy with that, in fact. So I'm going to leave it at that. And that's clipped to that layer there. Turn the background off. Nearly done now with this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to get back in and we're going to find the Adobe stock that we used for the framing. And I'm going to drop it in place. And that is it there. Now, at this point, I'm going to turn off the atmosphere so that you can see how the image looks. Now, the atmosphere at the moment, I quite like what I can see in the background now. But the atmosphere at the moment actually works well without 
being there for the sandworm. Again, I didn't download the high-res image for this. As you can see, Adobe Stock is still written across it. These are the ones that you can preview to see if it works in your images. So I'm just going to work with this one just now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go select subject. You can see that that's selected her very well, except for this area here. So we are going to add to the selection. I'm going to hold down shift and draw around there. So that's me. I've added to the selection. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mask out of that. And the reason I'm creating a mask is it means I can get rid of areas that I don't want. I'm also going to rasterize this. So I'm going to zoom in just to see what I need to get rid of, what the white area is there. So if I go into the brush, choose a soft round brush, and I'm going to push the hardness to about 39, 57%. And I'm going to take the brush size right down. And in the mask and painting in black, I'm going to get rid of these areas. And zoom out. So you can see that that's made a rather good job of selecting. And we'll just get rid of the areas of the white. Going to minimise, zoom back out. I'm going to make a copy of this one to show you the same technique again. And I'm going to apply the layer mask and then turn off that. If I hold down control, select, select, modify, contract, I'm going to contract by one pixel this time. Click OK and I'm going to go select, inverse, delete, deselect. Now that should have got rid of quite a lot of the white. She's going to be rather small in this image, so I'm not too worried if it doesn't do too well with this. I'm going to zoom in here. E, I'm just going to use the eraser now. Now, normally I would work with masks, but for the purposes of this, and because she's so small in the image, and because of what I'm about to show you, it works fine. So, I'm going to put that layer right in there, because it's turned off anyway. I now need to get into the background elements, and I need to move her down to... here so i'm just going to grab her and move her underneath that so you can see that she's now underneath that control and t scale her right down in size and she's going to become one of the framing that's basically calling for the, the sandworm i'm going to make her that size and the reason i'm making her so small is because we need to get, give the sandworms size and I can make it even smaller than that but I'm going to leave it at that just now because of what I'm about to do I'm going to darken her down and I'm actually going to affect the layer that she's in so I'm just going to go control and L and just darken her down so this is destructive just to about there click OK couple more elements to add to this bring this in and as you can guess, I'm going to grab that and add it in here. Click OK and then go select subject. And this will select the entire chart there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the bits that I don't want by using this, the lasso and working outside of the selection, choosing minus. Select there, go up there. Again, it's so small, you don't have to worry. And then go C, V. And that copies that up there and deletes that from that. Select the layer, edit, transform, flip horizontal. We're going to move that down and scale it down as well. And I'm just going to twist it there. And I can zoom in and place this on to where I actually want it. So I can do that and place it just around the shoulder there. Just roughly in that area. I'm also going to expand this via the warp, just so that we get a little more movement in it. Edit, transform, warp. And I'm going to start pulling it down that way slightly. Bring it out. And do that. And bring that down there. I'm going to tuck that in there and leave that like that. Now that already looks as if it's got movement in it because it's stretching, so I'm going to click OK. 
Again with this, I'm going to press Control and U, which is Hue Saturation, and I'm going to drop the saturation out of this. Not too much, but quite a bit, and I'm also going to darken it down slightly. Again, not too much. And you'll notice the one that I've chosen, the light source is going to be coming in this way, so I've chosen that for that. A couple of bits in there with white lines, I'm just going to press E, and because it's so small in the image, just take them out ever so slightly, just like that. I'll leave that on there. Still one more to put into this, and this is the image here. Now, as you can guess, it's the scarf that I want, but I only want so much of the scarf. So I'm going to go into Select, Quick Selection Tool, and if I draw it on there, it should take me out, and I should get most of this that I'm after, and hold down ALT, take some of that out, and it will take out some of these, but again, it is so small in the image, I'm actually not too bothered with this. It's the process we're interested in. I'll just take it down there a wee bit, to there. Again, Control C, Control V, and then delete that layer. So you can see everything that's in there. I'm going to use the eraser just to tidy up some of these areas. And the eraser's at 100, the flow is at 45, so we'll take that back up to 100. Take that down there, in there. Take out some of these areas. Let's move it up so that I can see exactly what else it's selected. Take that in there. Colour, you can see it's too light. It's also too big as well, so we're going to work at a smaller scale. And this again will just add more to the image itself. So I'm going to do that, take it down to about that size, and we're going to add a second one in here. I, I don't like the fact that it's matching the flow of this, so I'm going to stretch it, Control and T, I'm going to take it down that way a bit and turn it round again to give us more depth in the image. But yet again, I still need it to be warped. So what I'm going to do is edit, transform, warp. And I'm going to put a split in here. And I'm going to drag that up that way a wee bit and pull that to there. I'm going to put another split here. Once I've moved that down, and I'm going to curve that slightly and push that back up there, just so that we're adding that tiny bit more movement to the entire image. Take that up just to about there. Click OK. As you can tell, it's too light. So, what we have to do, and I'm going to affect this layer, so this is destructive. I'm going to go into the levels, the curves. And I am going to bring the lights right down. It's about there. So we've got that curve there, which is still leaving us some of the detail in it. I'm going to click OK and zoom out. I'm quite happy how that's looking so far. So what I'm going to do is combine all three of them together. Remember at the bottom, we still have a safety net of this if it doesn't work and you're not happy with it. E, E. So that's Control and E. And that is now one entity there. If I can turn that on and off. I want to darken certain areas in this. So I'm going to now create an adjustment layer. And I'm going to get into the levels again. And I'm going to look at it from this distance. And I'm just going to clip it to the layer. And I'm going to darken it down. Now I don't want it too dark just about there because of what we're about to do to this. And I'm going to blend that in. Again, destructive. This time, I'm going to get into the smudge tool. And I've got different brushes in here and ones that I've created myself. But I'm going to take one of the smallest brushes that I have and I'll zoom in slightly so that you can see this. It is windy. So we need to affect her here. So what I can do now is 
I'll speed this up, but at least you'll see the process of this. What we're doing is we're creating some texture and wind bone here. Now this part of the process takes a wee while. I'm doing it hair by hair, nearly. And if you have more dark, you'll get the effect quite a lot quicker. Uh, and as you can see, my strength is 89%. I'll speed this next part up so as that you can see how it all comes together. So, so far, that says we're nearly there. If I put the atmosphere back on, which we can adjust, but you can see now the entire image coming together. The last thing we have to do now is create the thumper, and that's going to be some cutting out, placing it in, and then adding the lightning to it. So, how we create the thumper? We bring in the first element of the thumper, which for me is this here, but I'm going to take that right to the top so that you can see where we are working. Now, I'm going to use the pen tool to cut around this. And this is the first part of the thumper that I took. So I'm gonna go in straight away, use the pen tool. Now that's me cut it out and copied it up onto a layer, just control C, control V. We have to darken this down and I'm going to darken this down destructively again, control and L, which brings me up the levels and I'm just going to darken this down. And I'm also going to desaturate it as well. Adjustments. And I'm going to bring the saturation out of this. And I'm going to clip it to that. Now there is not much colour in it, but it's because I need it to sit in the distance like so. And apply that to it. Next part is creating the actual thumper mechanism itself. And this came from here, which was a motorbike, as you can see. And the thumper element that I want is here, which is the petrol cap. So again, I'm going to zoom in. Now that I've zoomed in, I'm going to use the pen again for this. And I'm just going to select there. Is in the desert. It's going to be slightly worn. I'm going to go select. OK. Control C, Control V. I now have it on top. I can get rid of that layer. Right, that gives me one half of the thumper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale it up slightly just to about there, I'm going to flip it that way. And the reason I am flipping it is you'll notice the angles that are here. So I'm trying to match these up as best I can. And I'm just going to take it to around about there. At the same time, I need to darken this. So I'm going to create an adjustment layer above this. And I'm just going to use a brightness and contrast. I'm going to turn the brightness down, clip it to the layer, turn the brightness down, and turn the contrast up. And that gives me quite a bit there. I'm going to use the mask in here to paint out the areas that I don't want it to be affecting. So now that's a white mask. So if I paint there, and that's quite a hard brush. I'll take that back and I'll soften the brush down. I paint this out just around there because also remember the sun's coming in from over that area. But it still gives me darkness in here, which I'm quite happy with. And I will control and E and merge that in. So that's now destructive. So now that I've created that, I need the bottom half of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it smash into the same part again. So I'm just going to select it, control J, and then move it down to around about there. Now, for this to work, I need it behind there, like so. And that way, it creates the same angles with this. So I can leave it like that, and I can take out that area there, and I would do that with the pen tool. Go back in here, select the pen, and then just pull that round to where I think the angle is right, just about there, in, selection, OK, delete, deselect. 
And that's it. So that's us created the thumper, but there's still one part missing. So we now need to create the metal steel rod that that thumps up and down on. So again, I have another image that I'm going to drag in and I'm going to click OK and move it up above them just so that I can see what I'm doing. I'll just take that steel rod. So what I can do with this one is I can go into the lasso tool and I'll take the polygonal lasso tool and I'll just draw across there, there, take it down to there, across there, take it back up to the top, C, V, and then I can delete that. So we now have the steel rod that that would go into. This steel rod needs to be in between here, and I'll tell you why in a second. So if I choose the move tool and put that in there, you can see that it's not in between. So I need to take it up there and increase the size of it like so. The other thing that I need to do is I need to shift the angle of it. So we're going to move that angle slightly. So I'm going to put that in the center where I think it should be. Move the center selection point and rotate that slightly. Just to about, say about there. And click OK. For this one, I'm going to create a mask and I'm going to paint out the areas that I don't want and the reason there's a couple of areas I don't want is simply because there's a curvature here and we need to keep it as best we can within that curvature. So if I do that there very carefully and then I do that and then at the top here I try to emulate the curve. of that area there. Get it as near as we can, like so. Zoom out. And that's us created the thumper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine all them into one and then shrink it down in size. So I'm just going to select all the layers there. Control and E. The thumper now becomes one. From here, Control T, Shrink it right down in size, take it over to near where the framing are. I'm going to put it at an angle, just about there. I'm also going to darken this down slightly again. This time I'm going to do it via an adjustment layer and I'm going to choose levels with this. So I'm going to darken it down slightly, clip it to that, darken it down even further can raise the highlights if I want or leave them so I'm going to just bring them in slightly about there that looks fine except for the fact that it doesn't work because it looks as if it's just stuck on there what we do next combine that to it control and E zoom in slightly and what we're going to do now is we're going to look for an area where we can copy across onto that so if I go here and that is the thumper that's sitting on top. I can move the thumper down to any part of the image and it's still sitting on top. If I put it under there, still on top, put it there, it should disappear down behind. Now I could leave it like that and quite happily leave it like that, but I want to show you a way to copy this. With the thumper layer selected, I'm going to create a new layer above it and I'm going to choose another area. So I'm going to go in here and what I'm going to do is just paint through. Just paint like that, as if it's the shadow of it as well. I'm going to go in and go E for erase and take some of it out there. Now I can move this one because it's on its own separate layer. And I can move it, bring it up to where I think it should be. Press E in the keyboard and erase certain areas that I don't want it to affect. So you can see there, it's actually erased some of what I've done. Again, go in and select. This time I can blend in some of that. Zoom out, see how it looks. That looks okay for that. What's still missing is the lightning. Back into the brushes, I have 
lightning brushes here. Again, they are downloadable. So I'm just going to take the one with the most curves, which is that one there. And as you can see, they are quite big in size. I'm going to take them right down in size, slightly bigger than that. And I'll just make that size a bit bigger. Zoom back in, create a new layer, and just put it there. And that's it. That's the lightning on its own layer. Zoom in again, control T just for the lightning, and let's bring it over to the thumper itself. Now, I don't know if that would be bright enough. Let's see. If it's not bright enough, copy it up once and then combine the two by going Control and E. So there's one part of the thumper there. I'm also going to use Erase again. And I'm going to do that and take it from underneath it. And then I'm going to copy that again. And then this time I'm going to flip it. Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal. And it's the same one but it will work with this because I can go into Edit, Transform, Warp and I can change the shape of it slightly. Click OK. Zoom back out. So that's us got to that part so far. Last thing we need to do now is turn on the atmosphere. Last but not least, you can add final finishing touches to this and I'm going to go Shift, Alt, Control and E and that combines all of the underlying layers into one layer for this effect. Adjustments, I'm going to get into the adjustments and I'm going to pull down the mid-tones. Just around there and you'll see that creates more contrast in the image. From here, because I want the light to show through, I have a mask. Press B in the keyboard for brush. Go in and select the soft round brush. Take the size right up. And I'm going to click just around here so that we have a darker foreground going in to a lighter distance. From there, I'm dropping in the text, which is Rock Wilderness, I think it was. Rock Wilderness, downloaded from the internet. And I'm going to add one more layer, just to create even more depth, which is going to be a gradient, a black gradient. I'm going to hold down Shift, draw up the way. Too dark. From there, go in to a soft light blend and bring back the opacity of the layer. And that helps create even more depth in the image. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, although it was a long one, I hopefully you got something from it, even if you watched it in stages. But the thing as well with it is, if you find the foreground elements, in this case the rocks, distracting, for the fact that it's all built in layers and groups, you can turn off any elements you want to see if perhaps that's a stronger image. Or do you prefer that one? Now, for me personally, I prefer that image. So I now can go in and change any elements within that. Now that I have that one there, I can go in and go Edit, Transform, Warp, and I can drag that bit down. And then it doesn't seem as distracting with that. Hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial and thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.